Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Nace St. Clair stream. Tonight, we have to, we get to see if St. Clair can continue their dominance in the collegiate scene. But first, we got to introduce the commentary. Myself, the saved one, joining me is Bailable. Bailable, are you ready to cast some Overwatch tonight? I am very ready. I'm excited to see. This is going to be the second week for this current like hero pool with the mm -hmm. Ryan the McCree widow and then the brig with obviously echo being banned as she's too new. Mm -hmm. Um, just to see if the metas kind of change going off of what the pros played over the weekend. Yeah. Since like no one gets to see what the pros do until the weekend comes. And now will we see them copy that or if we're going to see them kind of change it up a little bit. Yeah. So t talk to me a little bit more about that for the guys that don't really know about uh, overwatch too much. What have you been seeing in terms of meta team comps? Because I know that McCree is super, super meta brig, almost essential for certain team comps. Ryan is a, is a massive shield and you can't really replace a massive shield. Um, so what have, where, what have teams really been playing instead of that? So we've, Preferably over the weekend, teams have preferred a like a Rissa Sigma combination due to the fact mm. that comboing their two shields together almost totals up to a Rhine shield. Right. So it kind of gives the team that shield to back out on and just the tanks together combo really well. Prepare. As well as we've been seeing a lot of May Reaper, which plays that sort of like brawl play style mm -hmm. where you just kind of run up into the enemy and just get in their faces and just, it kind of eliminates like any like like obviously McCree and Widow are banned, but if it was right. McCree and Widow, you wouldn't really be able to like get any real shots in because just everything's in your way. Yeah. And we see these two teams here as we actually get on to Busan. So if you guys don't know what type of map this is, it's a capture the point type of map where you do have to get the point or you have to capture the point and then have to get the percent up to 100. Right? It's very basic as well. If the enemy contests on 99%, then it, it goes to an overtime where it's literally first one to uh to just get the point itself i uh, you guys will see as we go on I, I probably did a horrible explanation there but it's fine as we get to see this map what's your experience on busan here uh available uh because i heard some pros really don't like this map um yeah it's a very interesting map it has yeah. some different qualities to it like this one this point on particular has now we see the Farah popping off uh, it's very good for Farah as it's very open and she has a lot of space she can play around in a bunch of corners she can just kind of sit and float yeah yeah and already across the board a couple of kills going back and forth as well Jub Jub trying to get onto the point to avenge his team he's only able to take one which is unfortunate but the rest of BSC Bobcats are able to take the point pretty decisively at the end of that little skirmish. I mean, I see a swap over to the Ash, hopefully yeah. to try to counter out this far here as with McCree and Widow being banned. She isn't exactly that easy to deal with. Um, so with both of these shields in their way, it could present a difficulty for her. Ooh, already a fair ultimate does come through, but doesn't actually kill anybody for the time being at least. So already St. Clair's comp really working for themselves. Yustin in the back line versus the hamster. It's not able to really do too much damage, but definitely stall out the rest of the team. And just like you said, the Ash counters the Farah and also counters up the Mercy. Now the rest of St. Clair able to get onto the point, taking their last couple of casualties before finally capturing the point itself. Yeah. Capturing the point here for St. Clair is really crucial to their success on this map as especially Orissa, she's such a stationary character that she doesn't like to move around a whole lot. So if she can just kind of sit there and bunker up on the point, not really move anywhere, it gives just easy space to the enemy. But the second they're right there in front of them, there's nothing much they could do because with the May, she has the ice wall that is the only thing in the game that can change the map's like yeah. design. So they just wall off a character, freeze them, just shred them, and it turns into a 5v6 really quick. Ooh, Coalescence coming out just to see if they can take out any of the priority members. However, Mercy and Ash already going down for St. Clair. Now the stalling potential has to come out as well. But Prince Wada able to take one for himself. Now getting onto the point. Crypto getting into his ice block. Another one going over to Wada as well. Blizzard coming out for May. Now as the rest of the team has to just try and get whatever they can, whatever casualties left, and St. Clair is able to hold the point as well. Bob coming out just to finish off the last Farah. And then there's just uh, <laughs> an Anna that jump, jumps off the point. Basic stuff just to not uh, feed off any ult charge. Bobcats already just getting their teeth wrung here on Busan. Oh, you see 
uh, Seiko are taking a little bit more of an aggressive approach than they did before, where now mm -hmm. they're sitting a little more up front to try to give their Ash some more space to work with and more angles on this Farah, as that was one of the turning points almost there for the Bobcats. Now with another push here, Bobcats trying to disrupt what St. Clair has going for them. If you guys remember, we ended up watching St. Clair in another tournament just last week, and they were able to absolutely dominate just like they are doing here. Seymour with one jump jumble with another, with a couple of explosives over towards that enemy squad. Prince Water just getting D.Va out of her mech, and as well taking a casualty for himself. Don't want to really finish off that last diva, the mini diva, because she's super, super useless in that form. As well, Seymour on the point itself, taking out Soldier with a rock just to the face. As well, they're able to secure this first objective on this first point. St. Clair go up one to zero on Busan. One to zero. That was really well played for St. Clair. You know, they had their tanks had extremely good positioning when the Farah when their first defensive hold didn't quite work out for them so cleanly. They adapted well, giving the Rash more space. The Rissa poles are going into good spots for the Sigma to pair up with because mm. Arissa Sigma, one of its strongest capabilities is just Sigma's like everything combos yeah. with uh, Arissa's pole. Like you can get his rock in there to get a good stun. He can just use his primary fire to lay out like a massive amount of damage on whoever gets sucked in. Right. One. Yeah, and uh, we get to see more combos like that as we go on, and I'm sure um, I feel like St. Clair just know exactly what they need to do here on this next point in order just to finally take the point. You even saw there uh, on the the last kind of the last little game um, how they were just they were able to really come back. They had the disadvantage early on, but already another fight is going to be started here. We have Enjoyable not taking any casualties for himself. It looks like the positioning out of this DPS is just not really all that great, but Jub Jub is on the far side of the map, just landing shots on his opponents, doing a whole lot of damage to them. Not able to land the last couple, but it is fine because an explosive in that area is going to do just a little bit of damage while all of that is going on. St. Clair are fully focused on the point itself. Already starting to get a, a little bit of percent up towards the map. And Crypto for his troubles, throwing an ice onto this balcony. An ice shot onto the balcony and taking out Enjoyable. St. Clair had some extremely good positioning there as yeah. they had their tanks and healers and the May playing up close where they could just feed the enemy into that like wide open area where Jub Jub sitting on the uh, like arc there yeah. was just able to look over and just get some clean headshots in, combo his dynamite in with the Arisa pulls and just really get that ult charge towards his prop really fast. I love seeing aggressive uh, May play and now we see uh, Crypto doing that all across this map two times as he walled off his opponent in certain situations and has gotten a little bit of damage off and even though Bobcats, they don't really know what to do versus this May. They don't know what to do versus Crypto. So it's really good to see uh, St. Clair coming up for themselves in this advantage as well. All Most of their alts are now starting to come up, but Bobcast, they're trying to do literally whatever possible, break it down. Also goes down from Lucio himself, but he's, again, not really able to do anything while all this is going on. You have Jub Jub in the back line, in the, on the side of the map, just landing shot after shot after shot. He's just doing so much damage to this enemy team. Finally, the Bobcats actually getting a couple of kills for themselves now. Maybe they're finally able to take this point. As the only, it's really Lucio on the point. You can't really, uh, can't really take a point solo here, Lucio. Gotta be waiting for the rest of your team as well. Jub Jub unleashing Bob onto the point. Just to do a little bit more damage to his opponent. Jub Jub also going to be taken down. As he does take one for his troubles. But now it looks like the Bobcats really want to be oppressive on this point. Now, if the Bobcats manage to cap here, that could be crucial for them in the long game here as St. Clair had to burn a lot of their crucial ultimates on that last fight where Bobcats now are coming up on their supercharger, their flux, their bob of their own, and they're halfway to their beat, which, mm. you know, the supercharger going down, you just get all that damage burning through that shield so fast. Just, there's no way to mm. win the shield war. And the flux just, you know, they don't have a Lucio of their own to beat to save anybody. Yeah. 
And yeah, we gotta watch out for all these ultimates as they are coming up soon, just like you said beautifully. But now, as we look at this next take by St. Clair, we have to remember on the last map, St. Clair were very easily able to take the, the actual site back and it's already gonna be done. Prince Wada onto one and just gonna be the bob for the time being. But across crucial ultimate being taken down is absolutely so amazing. But now we have the rest of St. Clair trying to get onto this point as well. Bobcats are kind of adjusting to what St. Clair have prepared for them. Now they have pulled out the Sigma as well as the Orisa for themselves, as well as another May. It almost looks like Bobcats have just completely switched their comps around over to St. Clair's. Looks almost identical as they're facing each other. And it's already 50% that has gone down for Bobcats. And now we do see the essential pick, I'd say, from Slank Claire swapping off of the the Ash and the Mercy over to a Doomfist Lucio, which is an even more brawly comp. You know, you speed into the enemy team, you get a good pick or a good wall with the May. Uh, the Lucio especially with to try to counteract, which the Bobcats are already up on another extremely fast flux, um, which was crucial for them winning that last fight. Mm -hmm. Prince Wada getting the first frag here of the round, but Seymour lifts up three and only eliminates one, but that's all he really needed to do. It allowed Crypto as well as Jub Jub to get onto the point. Seymour with a triple kill. Jub Jub and Crypto finishing off the last two members. And with the overtime clock going down, Crypto just wanting to secure the round by placing the ice wall. You have St. Clair winning the first map here in this best of three series. Yeah, very well played for St. Clair, adapting on the fly very quickly to whatever Bobcats decided to pick. And then mm -hmm. possibly quite the mistake for Bobcats near the end there as yeah. they popped their beat before Seymour popped his flux, which, right. you know, obviously you saw like Seymour took out one and then everyone else on the enemy team was low. If perhaps if they had saved that beat, they could have saved some people along the lines in that final fight. Yeah, we saw amazing play that came out of uh, St. Clair there on in that game itself. And of course, we are on a five minute delay. Uh, so I hope you guys are have enjoyed the rest of that match as we are at a game. and You guys are still in it, but uh, definitely good stuff coming out of St. Clair there in that match. And of course, um, we saw the adjustability that came out of St. Clair. You were, you were saying that earlier, how uh, we needed to see how St. Clair were able to actually adjust because right when Bobcats switched up their comp, um, St. Clair, they kind of got stopped in their tracks. They didn't really know what to do until the communication came out and they were finally able to focus and actually take the map itself. So definitely really good stuff coming out of St. Clair uh, there in that match. Yep, for sure. That was... You know, practically said it all there, like yeah. St. Clair doing, <laughs> doing what they needed to do to win. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Uh, but what do you think that Bobcats need to change up here uh, for themselves? Because, um, I don't know, we, we saw like kind of the potential of a really good team out of Bobcats, like, right? They were able to take both points to 50% and just got stopped in their tracks. Um, so all they really needed was maybe one more hold for themselves and they could have gotten to 100%. But what did they need to change there? What mistakes did you see? Um, I think definitely like adaptability was a bit of a struggle for them as especially on the first point, they seemed mm -hmm. really reluctant to swap off the dive comp they were running, which yeah. in theory is a counter to the bunker that um, uh, St. Clair was running, but an Arissa Sigma bunker kind of counters dive with all the CC and the stuns that they have. So mm. it kind of just for sure they won the first point off of a couple like stray rockets that managed to find a couple people early on. But once St. Clair came back in, they were able to quickly take the point back for themselves. Mm. And then in the second map, they changed it up a bit. They ran the Arissa Hog, which I guess they favored to go with a little more shield break and change for like less shielding mm -hmm. where the hog can just burn through shields right but in the end after that hog doesn't really do a whole lot in terms of after breaking they shield they break the shield because right. you know, Arissa has the her golden state where she goes she just takes less damage she can just retreat if she gets hooked in may has the ice block where she just freezes herself and you know the mercy can just fly away moira mm. can fade there wasn't a whole lot the hog could really get done there, and I think they just didn't change it up quick enough. Yeah, so maybe we'll see if Bob Bobcats can actually uh, finally adjust to what St. Clair have uh, coming here into this series. Of course, they are in for the long haul. So, hey, if they can, 
um, adjust correctly in this next round. Definitely, they could potentially, we could potentially actually see a game at number three. However, the comps have already been chosen on both sides, at least for, for St. Clair, because uh, they are getting into position. Right now, they're actually switching out Jub Jub to play something more in your face. Uh, what does the addition of Reaper in this comp really add to what St. Clair have been doing so far? So the Reaper in this comp gives the team a little more sustain and doesn't stress the healers out as mm. much as if they were running a Farah or an Ash or a McCree, where the Reaper has lifesteal for his shotguns, right? He just goes in, takes a shot, especially when he's up on a tank. He just yeah. reels in all that health back. Healers don't have to do as much. And with the Lucio speed, you can just speed into a tank, kill them, and then get out. And then if the, yeah. team, the enemy team decides to push in, it becomes a 5v6. Yeah, funny little strat that we've seen St. Clair do multiple times in a row. They wait for one to get out of the door and then may wall it off. However, enjoyable. I feel like they've been watching some St. Clair in the past and have now switched on over to the Bastion as well. I feel like you also play a little bit of Bastion on this type of site, but the rest of St. Clair doing the exact same thing over and over and over again, just trapping Bobcats inside of their spawn. Bobcats so far have only gotten two kills for themselves, but Jub Jub wants to get on top and just wait for the flank to go down. He's already charged up 40% of his ultimate, but now wants to go in the back of Bastion. Bastion relaying to the rest of his team that, hey, there's a Reaper behind us. Jub Jub, only with a little bit of damage onto his opponents, but still, it's a lot of damage if you look at the long haul of the game. And now St. Clair have finally backed off Bobcats on the point itself, pushing it over to the first objective. We do see St. Clair, like, taking the good precautions, you know, getting as close as they can to the Bastion before they show yeah. themselves in that room. Working out really well for them as they just speed on to that Bastion, take him out, and then the rest of the team is just practically, as one would say, easy clap. Yep, I was saying, <laughs> you said it perfectly, but I uh, I was saying all the time uh, in the pregame itself um, how we're going to be seeing Prince Wada all over the scoreboard because he loves to be a very, very aggressive type of tank. And you saw it right there, lit up the scoreboard. I believe he ended up getting a triple or a double in that fight itself. It forced Bobcats off. But St. Clair, off of their early game start, are now able to do a whole lot. However, Doom's hit this coming down from the sky. Only takes out one. It's going to be Yustin to start off the point. But you have Crypto on the side, just going to stall out as much as possible as the rest of the Bobcats realize the situation that they're in. Want to push the point itself, and they've taken two casualties for themselves. Have only pushed the point just a little bit, but Jub Jub is now in the back line with his ally. Going to be landing a couple of shots on the May and takes him out as well. As well, you have the ultimate coming out from Reaper here in the fight. Takes out one, takes out two, third for your troubles. Prince Wada with one more. Yesin in the back line with one more kill for himself as well. Well, TP on top of the building from Jub Jub as he looks for his next prey. Now we saw Bobcats have a like decent opening. They comboed with the Orisa and the Doomfist well, where the Doomfist popped his ult, the Orisa pulled the team together, and then he dropped down on them to secure himself that early pick on to uh, Justin. Yeah. But. You know, St. Clair answering back well, you know, they had the ults they needed to take that fight back. You know, the May ult being extremely strong. Mm -hmm. You know, they throw that thing down and in a meta like this where there's no D.Va in play, there's nothing you can really do to stop that May ult from coming out. And just perfect wall to stop anyone from escaping it. Everyone gets frozen up and it's just rolling through them. There is so much happening on our screens right now, but all you have to know is that Bobcats have gotten two kills for themselves and are now pushing out the point. However, Seymour does want to stall out the point a little bit longer as they are not able to secure anything just yet. Prince Wada does have his ultimate available for himself, but it is taken to low HP. Doesn't want to just waste a useless ultimate on a push like this one. And Bobcats are finally taking their stand here on this map with 30 seconds left. They are able to push down the point and just get a little bit more time for themselves. Yeah, and perhaps a little bit of a communication error there from St. Clair. Seymour popping his ult when there was only yeah. just him, Prince Wada, and Imp left. You know, there wasn't really much follow-up they could have had with that Grevitic Flux. So that's big for Bobcats is now they go in the next fight with that May ult, which is practically just an easy team fight win. 
Mm -hmm. Got to wait for the flank out of Jub Jub. I always love watching Jub Jub's perspective because he does some crazy, crazy stuff here. And he's coming into the back line for the time being. However, the rest of Bobcats want to fly through their opponents, but it's going to be off the back of Jub Jub and how much damage he can do. Does reset back into his own team. He does actually do a little bit of damage, but Crypto does have his ultimate now available for himself if he wants to use a Jub Jub. Once again, going on the flank, Reaper versus Reaper, Ditto versus Ditto, and does take his opponent out eventually. Now, a lot of HP has been regen and the rest of St. Clair taking out their opponents with ease. The the kill feed on the right side has lit up blue, which means that St. Clair has taken another hold for themselves. And just like the announcer said, team kill goes into the hands of St. Clair. Yeah, perhaps a little bit of a mistake coming out when Bobcats popped their mail. Maybe they weren't ready for it to follow up or yeah. enjoyable didn't have his may wall ready but St. Clair was able to easily just Lucio speed boost out of it the second it went down yet another fight for themselves now as we see Jub Jub in the back line once again 70 HP but does get healed right on back up to full beautiful communication but hey that's the ultimate coming out of the enemy Reaper Bobcats have already taken two for themselves and they want to try and TP into the back of the sights and there you go Jub Jub with one kill for himself but does get frozen up by the May Big Jake getting off onto the side and finally taken now. No, nope, doesn't take out Seymour just yet. Seymour leaving himself alive. I thought he was gonna fall, but no. Seymour playing Sigma perfectly and just saving as much HP for the rest of his team that is left. Maybe they can try for one more hold here, however. That May wall is gonna be huge. You do have the ultimate that does come out from Seymour just to stall the point out even more. Maybe they wanted to actually try and hold this one here. Justin taking out the Arisa, uh, the Arisa ultimate, but finally, the point being pushed as a little bit more time does get added onto the clock. Very, yeah, very good Maywall there from uh, Enjoyable on the Bobcat side to prevent St. Clair from even bothering to push in and stop the payload in the slightest. Um, but St. Clair with a little bit of an ultimate advantage, um, you know, having the supercharger, having the beat almost ready to counteract the Gritovetic Flux. Uh, Crypto's almost got his mail to match Enjoyable as St. Clair is not really giving Enjoyable a good opportunity to use that mail and just get an easy fight win. Definitely. And now as we scale into the late game, as to say, only one member is going to be caught in the Sigma Ultimate. But break it down now being used by Lucio Crypto, able to get into the front line as well as Yustin. However, the Blizzard has come out. And there you go. Big Jake with four for himself. Now wanting a couple of more as he tries to just add up his KDA. Jump jump though, in the back line for himself. Takes out three. Now the 1v1 of Reapers go out. They are trying their darndest, but Jub Jub ends up going down at the end of the day. Big Jake teleporting right on back to save himself a little bit as once again, Bobcats able just to win the team fight itself. However, the spawn is so incredibly close to the, or the payload is so incredibly close to the spawn that they really didn't even need all that much time. Very excellent play from oh, yeah. uh, St. Clair there. You know, Jub Jub saw his opportunity, took it, absolutely clutched out that team fight. And now we see Crypto having this ult, and we're going into the final fight. This could just be easy game over here for St. Clair. Yep, it's whoever wins this fight, just like you said, with Crypto getting the first one. Jub Jub is actually down now in this fight, but Yustin healing the heck out of his team. But you do have Big as well in this fight. You got to take out the Reaper, guys, if you want to do literally anything with the overtime now uh, getting activated. You have to get onto this point and try and force your opponents off, but they're waiting for the spawns to come back. Jub Jub once again being taken out here, and St. Clair, are, their, their cracks are finally starting to show however i may have spoken a little bit too soon but may maybe i also haven't they're trying to push onto the payload as well as onto the site itself they're looking so incredibly close with just meters left here they need to finish off with 0.55 and they have finally done it bobcats have secured the third point for themselves because i need to take a breath that was both extremely close but extremely good for the bobcats as we saw like the we saw big jake flanking around the left side of that cart and just putting pressure on the tanks in the back line while that mail was out while the bobcats sped out of the ultimate 
just completely stopping St. Clair from being able to follow up on that big mail. Um, so they possibly didn't get the kills that they needed to win over that fight, and Bobcats just out-sustained them in the end. <sighs> Gotta take a breath on that one. <laughs> There's a yeah. lot of stuff that <laughs> happened in that last fight. However, Bobcats are able to take three. Now, St. Clair on multiple occasions have absolutely dominated their opponents in very ready fashion. The thing that St. Clair have to start to look at now as they push this payload is that Bobcats have no time remaining. They have no, no overtime remaining for themselves. So, correct me if I'm wrong. If St. Clair make it to the full point with time remaining, then Bobcats only have a minute to push the payload in total. That's correct. Okay, cool. Um, I've learned a little bit from watching this game, but uh, Bobcats... They, they need to hold a defensive lineup here. I believe they're literally pulling out the exact same comp that St. Clair did. And it, it worked for them on one push. However, if you don't have full-on practice of a team comp, then I don't know how effective it can be. As well, Bobcats not pulling out any crazy strats for themselves. However, St. Clair are. They're doing a, a little bit of a pirate ship type of comp. They have the Bastion on the site itself as well as a couple of shields. No flanks either coming out from Bobcats, as now St. Clair able to take this site just decisively. Yeah, we, you know, Bobcats opting not to play as aggressive, perhaps not expecting the Bastion to come out. And we see the change up in support line for St. Clair, opting for a Mercy um, uh -huh. uh, Baptiste over the Lucio Moira, yeah. because with the Lucio, you know, you're not going anywhere. You don't need the speed boost. Uh, and Baptiste's AoE healing is not only better than Lucio's when you're all clumping together on the cart like that, but with his both his ultimate, the Amp right. Matrix, being able to double that Bastion's output, and the Immortality Field preventing any deaths until it is either destroyed or it, the timer on it wears out. And then the Mercy with the damage boost and the healing and the res just lets this comp stay alive longer if, you know, someone finds a pick or two. And there you go. Picks you wanted and picks you're going to get as now two already going through. Hey, make it three. Why not? As well, Bobcats taking one for their troubles as Imp ends up res resing Prince Wada, which is exactly what you want to see with the card still being pushed. At this point, we have to remember that Bobcats were on very minimal time remaining. Now, all of a sudden, St. Clair have all of the time in the world with Seymour and Prince Wad of the dynamic tank duo taking out two. Imp does go down, but what does it cost? A whole lot of members of Bobcats. However, Crypto still staying alive as there was only a little bit of time or a little bit of a distance that St. Clair do have to push about a meter or so until they finally cap this point. Now, we did see that despite it not going against St. Clair's favor, you know, when Imp did go for the res, when the fight was being cleaned up, we saw Yustin throw out the Immortality Field to prevent the Mercy from both dying, but also the res from going through. Right. On the other hand, we also now see the Bobcats changing up their DPS lineup a little bit, going for a Mercy uh, Hanzo, so more of a spammy poke kind of composition, which is right. so good against Bastion because they can just peek out, shoot a couple of shots, go back, heal, shoot a couple shots, but against the Ant Matrix, it doesn't really matter because the yeah. second you peak, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and you're seeing it in the scoreline already. Jub Jub with his classic singing Bastion as it gets back onto the point and just absolutely annihilates the team. Even though I believe he only got like two kills or one kill there in that fight. Um, I cannot cast over that. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, you have to think about uh, what he was able to provide for the rest of the team, right? That everyone had to focus on the Bastion in the back line, but the rest of his team, it kind of opened up a little bit of a window for them to just absolutely annihilate their opponents. Yeah, they say, you know, some people in Overwatch say attention is the resource, and when it comes to Bastion, that is definitely crucial. As mm -hmm. you know, when Bastion's out, it usually takes an entire team's effort just to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. And you know, with that out, you have the other five members of St. Clair are able to freely do what they want, which, especially when the Bastion's being pocketed so hard, it makes it pretty easy for them to burn both of their shields out and then just clean up everyone behind it. That's it. And uh, th I don't know what else I can say on that. Five kills go over to Enjoyable. <laughs> he just absolutely annihilates their opponents. But James Bond type of Jub Jub coming out here as he is crouching <laughs> on the right side. <laughs> he is sneaking onto the point. What can you do, 007? What can you do? 
nothing for the time being. As no, he wants to just get back onto the point. Um, he does have his ultimate uh, available as well. It's gonna be a pocketed bastion. I haven't seen this in a. I actually I haven't seen this whatsoever. <laughs> but there you go. A shot, <laughs> a shot right to the face of three members. What are you doing, Jub Jub? He's going crazy and singing while he's doing it. Jub Jub is having a field day. I have no words for what I just saw. Yeah, there is not really much to say about that. Somehow Jub Jub managed to get behind and without Bobcat seeing it, it really opened the window for him to be able to use that ult. He's Pretty smurfing. effectively for a Bastion ult. Yeah, he's smurfing. That's all I can really say. You analyzed it perfectly as well. But as we head on to this next point, St. Clair doing basic St. Clair things as they are absolutely wiping their opponents throughout their whole entire field. No, I feel like they're not even trying, honestly. From what it looks like, they are just absolutely wiping the field every single push that they end up doing. I believe so far they've only been stopped once, and even off of that one little push, they were still able to come back in decisive manner. But once again, the Jub Jub Reign of Terror does get taken to very low HP, but obviously Bastion does have the heals for himself as well as from the Mercy, but ultimate coming through from Sigma lifts up two, taking two to very low HP. But Seymour now with one imp does get taken down as well. But I don't really think it really matters at this point because you still have Yus in here for the team wide healing. Res does come out onto the enemy Sigma as well, but Junkrat getting into the back line onto Prince Water. Prince Water being taken down to very low HP. Jub Jub still on the point for himself, does take out two casualties. And as well, Yasin turning into a DPS at this point, and even just to secure that win, the Maywall going out. St. Clair, they have three minutes for themselves, while Bobcats only have one. Score. Well, that was a little bit of a chaotic fight. You know, oh, we yeah. saw the Junkrat swap come out from Bobcats to apply a little more shield pressure, especially when damage boosted by the Mercy. But uh, also in like a closed off area, like the third point on Dorado, Farah isn't as effective. So that also warrants a good uh, Junkrat swap, especially with the high ground he can play around, make it easier to get those shots in. Um, and uh, though... St. Clair, you know, having Jub Jub go flank around and set himself up on the high ground with the pocket from Imp on the Mercy, just shredding out the last couple of members uh, through the Valiant, but failed attempt to retake on that last bit from Bobcats. Right. And now St. Clair have to come through with the defense for themselves. So far, they have done absolute wonders. And I feel like, I feel like they're going to do this strat where they have the Maywell, like they've been doing this whole entire time as well as Jub Jub just putting down his uh, his little turret things, the lasers, the laser beam things, and he's, they're just going to try and eliminate their opponents. Is it, am, I, am I sort of in the in the ballpark of correct there? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I'm curious as to what they're doing. It looks like they're setting up a TP to I make sure they no can go idea. back and forth. I am. This is not <laughs> something I've ever seen before. This is very interesting. Uh-huh. Multiple okay. times, St. Clair have surprised us on multiple occasions, and this is going to be another one. But Jub Jub does end up falling. Bastion is going to be in the back line, but Prince Wada now with one kill for himself. Just a trade of kills is what ends up happening as well. Seymour with one crypto does get taken now, and it's the turrets. This is the good old bronze strat. I know this strat, if I've ever seen one, where you have two turrets and you feel like it works, and it kind of worked <laughs> if you if you want to see that as working bobcats already eliminating their opponents as now st Clair has to go back to the drawing board jump jump going on the good old trust trusty i that was not a sentence jump jump going on to the hanzo here for this hole let's see what hanzo was able to do now I, I i like this coming out from uh bobcat seeing the torbjorn and the bastion yeah in recent weeks we have seen uh some strategies and even pro play come out involving torbjorn yeah um with uh some of the different hero bands especially like diva and uh, ryan you know not having as much shield and torbjorn being able to have both himself and the turret to just lay out work onto the shields yep it uh you know it just kind of falls <laughs> apart in like a ryan meta but uh here we see it's not exactly those weeks anymore and yes. Torbjorn isn't as strong as he has been. That's exactly what I was going to say is that, hey, a cheese strat only works the first time you do it. 
And that's just the complete wipe that came out from St. Clair. Jub Jub getting into the back line on that bridge and was able to take out two opponents before Bobcats even knew he was back there. Now St. Clair only has to push up to that first point and they were able to do so with no worries whatsoever. Bobcats, they got to come out with something kind of crazy because three minutes is a long, long time. Hold that first point. Our observer Yeti looking at one of the pinatas. That's unfortunate. It ended up dying. But we're good. Yeah. Bobcats definitely, though they don't have the time advantage on that, getting through that first choke on Dorado under that little like bridge area is like extremely hard. And the fact that they did it so quickly is a little bit impressive. You know, like St. Clair trying to push through that, granted, maybe with the Bastion, it could be a little easier being able to mm. final damage through that. But, um, you know, that choke can be pretty hard to push through and you often see teams, even in pro play, get um, stalled out for like long periods of time, one, two, three, sometimes even full holds because that choke is just so small. And with the cart, especially the cart inside of it, yeah, it makes it even smaller. Yeah, St. Clair was stopped only once, I believe, uh, in that choke. So maybe they'll get stopped again. Maybe they will just pirate ship their way on through. So many possibilities. It looks like Bobcats want to stick with the Torbjorn here on the hold as well. They want to pull out the Junkrat, and Junkrat is also really good in small chokes. So I guess that's why they ended up picking this one. But already St. Clair pushing the cart on through a very, very long distance, realizing where Junkrat is on the top of this bridge. No one going to deal with them just yet, as now he's just sending grenades down from the sky. No guarantee to hits just yet. A lot of AOE damage onto the tanks at least for the time being. Jub Jub also being taken to low HP, but he does communicate with the rest of the team. Crypto taking out one of the turrets coming out from Torbjorn as well. As so much AOE going into the corner, Jub Jub actually being taken out there at the end of the day as well. Uh, but Jub Jub now being rezzed here on the point. This is exactly the point that you were actually talking about is underneath this bridge is where teams have a whole lot of trouble and St. Clair so far are being stopped in their tracks. You have Big Jake taking out Steemore on the start of that point, but as well, Bunch of bobcats going down to low HP. Yeah, that was. This is a comp that I think bobcats are being really smart about. Um, you know, having to push through that choke, the junk rad and the torb that can just spam down through, even with the bastion there, can be really good. Saint Clair though, having a good answer, just go to the high ground, take them out from there, yep. and once everything falls apart, then you can push through the choke. Right, with the Rip Tower going out, does take out Jub Jub at the end of the day. However, the res is available because we hear that in our ears. However, Jub Jub now getting rezzed and just absolutely eliminates the enemy turret. Just saying, hey, I'm the only turret in this town. But finally getting onto the payload itself. Now wanting to push it just a little bit farther. Has about one minute remaining still. St. Clair have not won anything just yet and they need to push just a little bit farther. However, Bobcats and their spirit is just so incredibly crazy for the time being. Crypto actually being taken out. Now on the point itself, Bastion just wanting to shove the point itself as far as possible. Prince Wada being taken out, Job Job and Imp both going down. St. Clair are on the down foot and they need to push this point just meters away. Ow. With that being said, St. Clair having quite the ultimate advantage here, you know, yep. Bobcats have their rip tire, but that's countered by Justin's immortality field. Mm -hmm. um, you see Deathball and Seymour having their flux, so with no uh, sound barrier in play from Bobcats Lucio, I don't think, I think it's going to come down to who pops it first or who gets more value. Um, mm -hmm. But Crypto having the key ultimate to look for here is the May, uh, her ultimate. It's just that big AOE freeze that'll mm -hmm. hopefully stop Bobcats in their tracks and in theory that'll be the end of the round. Getting down onto the point now as Bobcats have taken a couple as well as St. Clair now with more for themselves and the strat that St. Clair was trying does not work! Bobcats come out here on Dorado and sweep their competition now! 1-1 in this best of three series. Yeah, the one ultimate that I completely forgot about at the end there was the Torbjorn Molten Core. You know, 
uh, didn't realize that like, he was holding on to that for so long throughout that last bit. And then on that final fight, you know, he lays that down all over the ground and just, so where did St. Clair walk? They can't go forward, otherwise they burn. They can't go to the side or they burn. They have to sit there in the choke, take the spam damage, or, you know, crumble faster than they would have. They just sat there. Yeah, yeah. It was just not a fun situation. Beautiful analysis coming from you, of course, as always. But um, yeah, that was just not a fun map for St. Clair to play. They had one last saving grace within the last couple of seconds of that round. And it wasn't actually that bad, right? Flank with the Hanzo and just see what exactly you can pull out in the back line. But it was unfortunate is that they weren't, weren't really able to close anything out within those last couple of seconds. Um, do you think that St. Clair could have done anything different within that last push? Like, did you see any errors within their team play there? Um, I think I would have liked to see them pull out a D.Va. I know yeah. um, Seymour is, you know, he's pretty good at playing D.Va. Right. Um, and D.Va being, like, practically a hard counter to Junkrat, I was surprised to see they were so reluctant to swap off uh, the Sigma, where instead mm. of having that shield that can only take so much... They could have a defense matrix yeah. that can just sit there for like it's either three or four seconds straight, soaking infinite amount of damage. Right? They can just easily just walk through the choke, and then that Torbjorn ultimate at the end there. If they had the Diva and the Diva flew into the Torbjorn, could have just eaten his ultimate, and then you know they don't crumble the Torb ultimate. They finish off the remaining members, and they could push that point to the last little bit. Yeah, I. I... It was almost kind of like the reversal now uh, from the last game that we ended up seeing where uh, it seemed like Bobcats, they were uh, they were the ones to not switch. But in this game, the one thing that you said is that you want to see them start to adapt into different situations. And they definitely were able to do so. Right. And the big point of contention was the main uh, the kind of like the bridge area that leads into the main market of Dorado. Uh, being that very small chokehold that is just so good for Junkrat. And they, since they were able to pull out the Junkrat uh, as well as the Torb, it almost just kind of threw St. Clair off guard, right? And they weren't really able to adjust to it. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, obviously, St. Clair um, have been practicing just so much within these past couple of weeks, and they really, really know how to show up when the rounds count for it and we've only seen them succeed really on stream or at least i have only really seen them uh sweep out their opponents but this is kind of like the first time that we uh finally see them uh bleed almost right gods do bleed at the end of the day but um i think it's gonna be kind of cool to see their comeback spirit right if they're just able to sweep out the the third map or if they're actually going to still struggle like they did uh, on dorado yeah, for sure. You know, as adaptable as St. Clair has been, maybe perhaps with all of the like practice they have been doing, you know, the tank lineup not being as diverse as uh, the DPS lineup, right? There's only mm. like like six, somewhere between six and eight different tanks, and then there's right. like 20-something DPS characters. It's a yeah. lot easier to switch between those. Maybe that's possibly why they're reluctant to switch off the tanks, especially mm. how key tank ultimates are in Overwatch. You know, you get a DPS ultimate, like, really quick, you know, whatever, like, maybe someone shoots it down, like a Junkrat tie, you shoot it out, doesn't get any value, whatever. But, like, a Gravitic Flux that lifts everyone up in the air and smacks them down, and all of a sudden, yeah. like, everyone's at half HP. Yeah. Or a Diva Bomb that goes in and just gets picks on its own, or Risa Supercharger buffing everyone's damage, so if they're running a Mercy like they were with the Bastion, she doesn't have to worry about damage boosting. Right, and in multiple occasions, we've seen uh, Saint Clair come back with with a almost decisive, a decisive game. Right, we always we always uh, say how um, Bobcats now kind of have the uh, they have the motivation, they have the momentum that they can now bring on into this third game. However, Saint Clair, all they really have to do is just wipe this one off their shoulders, right? They just have to kind of focus up a little bit more. And we have heard on multiple occasions how the Saint Clair comms are just super funny to listen to, uh, just because they are just goofing around, right? They always love to just uh, do their little own shenanigans. Uh, but when it really does come down to the wire, I feel like their communication is just super, super solid, right? And uh, we've seen it on multiple occasions, right? Where you can almost see the communication uh, bleed through here on the stream, right? Where you'll see uh, Justin completely 180 and is trying to heal someone when he's focused on one thing, he'll then turn his attention immediately uh, onto, onto others. So 
I feel like St. Clair right now, they're looking at this third map. What do you think that they're discussing? Like, what do you think uh, the coach is saying in order to kind of calm them down? Um, you know, perhaps like they're discussing some, uh, either like the team comm set they're planning on running in this next yeah. map, which is going to be Kings row mm-hmm. or, um, perhaps, um, you know, just anything really the coach can come up with to try to like keep them level headed, be like, you know, we're not out of this yet. It's one to one. You play this right. by map. You don't think about it as like a series. Like you don't think about it. Oh, we're down like like oh to two or mm. we're only tied one to one this is match point you know you play it as the maps go on it's like this is the map right now this is what we're playing you don't worry about what happened before right now as we head on over to king's road just like you said this is a uh, once again it's the t- same type of map as dorado uh so you have to get onto the payload initially well it's got the same characteristics as dorado you got to get onto the point initially uh fully capture the payload itself and then you have to capture a couple of sites themselves but saint Clair are now coming into this match fully adjusted jub jub is off the hanzo and he's now back on the ash it definitely worked in game number one just trying to take out any of his opponents already doing a little bit of damage over to the enemy pharah but Bobcats are now trying to get back into this one. We do have a little bit of server lag, and that's what the pausing that you guys see. So don't worry, we're, we're on the fix for that. But St. Clair, once again, they need to get into this match. They need to defend this point, and they are doing it so far. They're doing it beautifully. However, no frags have gone down on each side. Uh, uh, I do like the Ash Mercy coming out once again from St. Clair as they proved it could they it would work for them on busan against the farah and king's row being a map where you can see some farah you know right. perhaps they were expecting it because they knew that hey these guys like playing farah um and like over the weekend if for those who watch the overwatch league we saw that this same comp running the ash mercy over a like lucio reaper right. has been kind of the secondary strategy some some teams have been using you know they felt like uh with farah in play uh, if the fire does come out, they have the answer for it. If it doesn't, they can beat the Reaper comps at range, right? As right. they're walking in, rather than taking up that like close-up personal battle. Oh, uh, even though we see a little bit of uh, of server lag, this match itself is still going on. So when we fix all of that, we can definitely uh, tune you guys into what is going on. But so far, uh, it almost kind of seemed like. The defense out of St. Clair was just so good. The attack itself as well, coming out from uh, the opposing team, was also really, really good. And uh, no one was dying as a result, right? The healers, when they're really doing their job, it almost feels like uh, the, the front line is, like, unstoppable. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, you saw St. Clair uh, playing around that, like, uh, hotel area where like you stick the shields down against the wall and the dps kind of line themselves up we saw jub jub on the ash you know playing some different angles like up on the high ground and then he dropped down uh, to go play around his tanks a little more um, taking the angles against the fire because the fire wasn't like or at least at the start wasn't exactly able to play around any like corners or walls that she'd want to be because of right. how like predictable she can be in the sky especially against a hit scan um, but once you know, we saw that the tanks from uh, the Bobcats had pushed up past the statue, uh, and Tankler, St. Clair had to back up a little bit, that Farah was able to take position around both the statue and the hotel itself, so she could just peek around, take a couple shots, like, peek back, so that way the Ash can't hit her constantly. Right. Uh, and that's where uh, St. Clair's defense kind of fell there, and they were able to cap the point. Yeah, so we have analyzed a whole lot of St. Clair's comps so far and what they are able, or what they can do better as these next couple of games go on. However, uh, we do have some server issues that we do need to get solved. So before, or no, that's kind of it. So we are going to send to a very quick break, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but don't go anywhere. We've got some more Overwatch St. Clair action coming up in just a little bit.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once again to some more Overwatch action. Of course, the beautiful people over uh, in this match ended up pausing the match itself for us as we get jump right on back into the action. Now, St. Clair are in literally the middle of a fight. Bobcats have pushed the point all the way up at least to the first point. However, they are now on their small comeback victory for themselves. Bobcats have not really pushed into the second site itself all that much. However, they've gotten a sizable, sizable lead for themselves because they still have three minutes to push this uh, payload. It does seem like uh, they're making good use of this Farah and the Hog, especially on that streets phase. It doesn't surprise me to see the Farah work out so well, as those buildings give Farah so much space to work with and things to hide around that Jub Jub won't be able to get an angle. And then on the second point, you know, you see it's very, like, uh, zigzaggy, or there's right. that corner that she's playing around right now. Uh, then there's the second corner that they'll be able to play around, and it'll just make it really easy for her to get those direct hits in, build up an ultimate really quickly and just shoot herself in, pop bolt, get a couple picks, get out, and then, you know, go on to the next fight. Right, and now that the Bobcats are slowly being actually kind of pushed off of the point itself, now Seymour able to pick up the first kill for himself, as well as a whole lot of stalling coming out from the rest of St. Clair. The Maywall goes up just to stall their opponents a little bit longer as well. Whole lot of ultimates available for St. Clair, but yeah, the whole hog coming out first of all. Blizzard as well is going to stop, but Jub Jub is in the back line, just absolutely wrecking havoc on his opponents. And since they want to play a little bit more passive, they put another Maywall up just to say, you know what, let's just reset back onto this point. Now we do see the swap off the fire onto the Ash, which for this third point, I can kind of agree with. Though Farah yeah. can be strong, yeah. she's not always the strongest. Um, but now with St. Clair, and Bobcats having essentially equal on their ultimates aside from uh, uh, Bobcats, Narwhal, and their um, Moira having slightly less ult charge than their counterparts. Bob being sent into the back line is now it only picks up one kill for themselves. Crypto with now actually with two for himself as well. Prince Wada just securing that last kill here on the point itself. It's just a clean sweep that came through from St. Clair. Something has changed in them that they are now an absolute beast here on defense. They've always been beasts on defense, but it seems like this is kind of different, right? They haven't lost a fight in a really, really long time. Yeah, you know, they're playing it you know, like extremely well with the payload being in the spot that it is. It allows them to take cover, not only behind the payload, but that corner where they're just putting their shields in between. So that way, you know, they peek out and they can hide in like more than one spot. You know, if they want to creep around the payload, get a couple shots in a different angle. Right. Uh, and we see the supercharger coming out here to boost everyone's damage. Taking good precautions to hide in that back room to avoid the dragon strike. Mm -hmm. And to Interesting change-ups on the side of the Bobcats, having now the Junkrat over the yeah. Ash. They only gave it really one shot, and uh, Deathball swapping off the Hog onto Wrecking Ball. So far, it's working, which is the weird thing that we have to analyze here, is that now Junkrat, for whatever reason, just really works versus St. Clair. Maybe they're just not too used to facing versus it. That's unfortunate. Sigma ultimate not going to take anybody out. However, he does get on back down. So he kind of use it as a zoning ultimate. Definitely good. Coming out of Seymour still takes one kills for his troubles. Crypto now with two. Prince Wada with one uh, imp. Rezzing up Jub Jub as he was, he actually fell early in that fight. Now with 22 seconds remaining, you see the rest of St. Clair actually holding up within the defensive line. Not holding on the point itself but they want to try and see if they can get as much damage on their opponents as possible. And so far they're able to do so. However, there is a Lucio on the point that is going to push it just one millimeter up. However, the rest of St. Clair now pushed on back over to the point. It's the rip tire that could save the whole entire match and doesn't take anyone out, which is unfortunate for Bobcats. However, for the rest of St. Clair, they have big old smiles on their faces, but you do have the hamster on the point itself, now spending circles around, around, and also uses his ultimate for himself, now getting a triple kill for himself. Bobcats are just millimeters away from securing this point, and they're able to do so. So, Bobcats, three points for themselves here on King's Row. To three. 
Yeah, and we do see St. Clair seeming to struggle when it comes to facing up against that Junkrat, like you had said yeah. before. Like, he's just burning through those shields and laying out damage, getting really quick rip tires, and St. Clair just don't seem to have the answer that they're looking for. Mm. However, St. Clair being able to hold that for so long, burning the timer down to 0-0 zero, zero on a hybrid map, means that if St. Clair finish with over a minute, Bobcabs do not get a second attempt on their attacking run. We saw that in the last game. The single thing we have to think about. We always we always got to play devil's advocate because St. Clair had three minutes above their opponents, right? And they weren't able to do anything crazy with it. It, it seemed like Bobcats' pure spirit just allowed them to take that point. Uh, also pure skill, right? These, these players are also very good at, at this game. Um, but it's honestly all in the back of uh, Enjoyable. I don't know why this player is just absolutely popping off, but... Of course, Big Jake has done his work for himself. Echo, as well as Cole, on the healing for this team, has just provided wonders for their tank line as well. Um, their tank line itself, Death Ball and Narwhal, have come came up huge in a lot of different situations. So we got to give credit where credit is due. However, just like you said, we always got to take in St. Clair, and their attack is so incredibly oppressive. And we see it once again, how they are just trying to jump bunny hop onto the point itself. They're going to be using the teleporter into the back corner as they already start to set up the Bastion now. Bastion shooting through the May wall, as well as a lot of the shields that are coming through from the Bobcats. No one able to take out Jub Jub just yet, as Jub Jub does take one kill for himself here on the point. And no percent has gone down on the point itself just yet. But a whole lot of damage has definitely been afflicted on the Bobcats themselves. Now looking for a brand new angle is going to be enjoyable as well as some of the tanks that are coming through from the Bobcats and it's only one kill has gone through so far. Imp also gonna be resing his dead teammate Seymour. Seymour, Seymour now getting onto the point as he does take out almost one for his troubles, but no, it's gonna be the Bobcats with their line of defense. That are just, that's just so incredibly crazy. But now as we digress, Still, a whole lot of damage going back and forth, but Bobcats are able to hold their own. Now, this strategy that St. Clair has pulled out is quite honestly a personal favorite of mine. Yeah. They didn't quite do what I expected them to do, but being able to TP the Bastion up to where, you know, onto a high ground where you can just lay out damage, uh, stop the enemy from really peeking, even if you have two shields in his way, and uh, especially with, you know, the support of Imp Van Yustin being able to just keep him topped up, uh, damage boost from the Mercy. They are going to swap it off now. It didn't quite work out for them. Yeah, they want to nope. change up the composition now. Crypto going over to the Symmetra as well. Jub Jub going over to his tried and true Hanzo. I feel like Jub Jub, whenever things just don't go uh, in the meta comps way, he always pulls out the Hanzo and pulls out some crazy, crazy things. It's definitely a huge uh, pick for the side of St. Clair. But now they default back into their good old positions. And a Riptire finds Jub Jub just sitting in the corner. Death Ball as well. Two kills for himself as well enjoyable with one mate with a thir uh, second one or first one for themselves as they try and stall off St. Clair's comp. Really nice denial as well coming through as Prince Wada did get trapped in the hands of the Bobcats but now only one minute and 40 seconds is the only thing that Bobcats have to hold and they have already taken down their Titans St. Clair but Jub Jub says no as he does take out one. Uh, Bobcats, though, with an ultimate advantage. That pick might not matter. You know, we see the Gretovic Flux coming out now, dealing loads of damage to St. Clair's tanks. Uh, Crypto finding a good pick, though, on onto Narwhal of the Bobcats. But somehow I think that Bobcats have a pretty good chance here to pull this off with both support ults being online, despite the Super Jetter coming out from. Yep, one minute is now remaining here on the point. St. Clair able to take at least half of the point itself, which is just not enough just yet. Now, almost getting to two ticks, and they're able to secure it, but Jub Jub Yustin pull their way through here on this first hold with just a minute to spare Imp, securing the last kill for himself. The Mercy just wasn't really working out for them, so they change it on up, and now they have three minutes to push these sites down. I'm not really too sure what happened there at the end of the fight. You know, it seemed like Echo Zempai was holding on to his um, 
coalescence for so long there, like, despite, you know, them trying to hold it. Like, it was 3v3, you know, the fight right. was winnable despite them not having the spawn advantage. Um, with St. Clair's Justin popping his coalescence, you'd think that you'd see the matchup, especially after Bobcats had invested so heavily. You know, they used the supercharger, they got a big flux, you saw the beat come out, and the May Ultimate, the. The blizzard, yeah. which is huge in the current state of the meta, yeah. Just and we see that going against the Bobcats now, where Saint Clair got to save their grid of X Lux. They got to save the mail, and Bobcats could fall for it. Yep, two go up into the air. Now two are also trapped behind the wall. Are they able to survive? No, they are not. If they did, then I would have been very, very surprised. However, St. Clair on attack is a force to be reckoned with, but there is the Junkrat ball that does eventually get taken out because Junkrat himself actually got taken out for his troubles as well. But now back onto the point, just the final touchings on the cake itself. Now St. Clair just needing to take out a couple more members here as they have finally found their stride here on attack. Finally finishing off this point as well. Getting to this objective is their main goal. They've done so, they have done so, so far here in this match, but now it's a huge other Titan that they have to face. It took Bobcats five whole minutes in order to get past this point. And now Crypto finding the first frag here of the point. Bobcat with the ultimate advantage though, having almost both support routes online. You know, Narwhal's coming up on his supercharger to match Prince Wada's, and Imp is it's a little bit slow on his ultimate charge right now, only having 32% to that sound barrier, which could be the difference between, you know, negating the damage of that supercharger or just just plainly matching out uh, Cole the Crazy's uh, sound barrier of his own. But, you know, they do have the, you know, Crypto does have his ult. We see Jub Jub swap over to Pharah, which Thank you, because <laughs> very good counter to the Junkrat. You know, when you're up oh, yeah. in the sky like that, there's nothing Junkrat can do unless he's oh. getting nutty shots. That's a lot of AOE damage, and that's all I could really say on that point. Now it should just be an absolutely clean sweep from there. Flux coming out, as well as Prince Wada's muscles as a triple kill goes down for him. Yasin, Jub Jub are the last two, and that... I believe is going to be it, unless Bobcats pull out some kind of crazy and just get back onto this point. And just like the cast of curse, it is, they are able to get back onto this point and just defend for a little bit longer. It's gonna be the Hammond so far here, but Jub Jub is now getting onto this point and just raining missiles all across the point itself. But you do have Enjoyable that is here to say, you thought St. Clair were gonna win that easy? No, I'm here, Bastion for, for themselves. Triple kill going down now as the health bars of St. Clara have dwindled down to nothing. Bobcats with just three meters left have now held, held this point with one minute remaining. Now that swap from Enjoyable is actually pretty big here, obviously. Yeah. Like, you know, we got the big picks there. It's obviously surprised St. Clair to see that come out. Uh, but not only that, St. Clair can't finish with a minute now, which means Bobcats are going to get a second attack uh, on this if St. Clair do manage to cap, finally cap through this final point. It's got to be off of the back of Jub Jub because him on multiple occasions has flanked and done absolute wonders and he does end up finding a Bastion, but at what cost? It's going to be his ultimate, but at the sacrifice of the rest of his team, that is not too great because now St. Clair, they cannot do anything for themselves. They ended up going one for one there. And I feel like Bobcats were just able to hold way, way better with their defensive line with 17 seconds remaining. This is going to be the final fight that we see both of these teams potentially in. If Bobcats hold this, they have taken the W. However, Deathball has gone into the back line as well with his ultimate. Is he able to find any kills for himself so far? That answer is no but it's going to be at the cost of a couple of shields now. Overtime has gone down. Jub Jub is in the back line, did take out the Bastion and hasn't gone down himself yet, which is just so incredibly good. It's the Blizzard that came up from Crypto as well. The clean sweep from St. Clair. Just buy them a little bit more time here on King's Row. And we are headed to an overtime minutes. Just one minute for each of these squads. 
Now that was a really good swap from St. Clair moving off the far end of the Hanzo because they saw that the Bastion was really keen on playing in that back area where he's kind of off on his own, where the Hanzo just the second there's like the teeniest tiny pixel perfect angle can just spam mm. out his arrows and just take out the Bastion really easy, which we saw at the start of the fight. And Enjoyable went down, and then St. Clair was able to push in. Crypto was able to get the last 30% of his ultimate, lay out the yeah. blizzard, and just clean up from there. One minute for each of these teams. And this is where we've seen both of these squads pull out some crazy, crazy things. St. Clair realized the situation that they're in, and they're going back to their tried and true comp. We're way back, I believe, in round number one. No, it was round one of Dorado where they were able to pull out this type of comp. And from what you said, it provides a whole lot of lifesteal, so it takes a little bit of pressure off of the healers so they can heal their frontline tanks. But on a map like King's Row, they just want to hold this choke here for the start. I don't know how effective this comp is for uh, this site. How effective is it? Um, this comp can be very effective if they ignore the pharmacy well. Because what they're going to have to do here against the Pharmacy is they're going to have to be aggressive and they're going to have to be fast. Because right. if they wait too long, the Pharah's going to sit there and build their ult up really quickly off this point that can pretty much not even do anything to her, barrage them and win. So they're going to have to speed boost in, and like you see here, you know, they yeah. went in, they got, they're picking off the tanks with the Reaper, and they're going to be forced to get out Pharah or no Pharah. Right. As Crypto does take one for himself, the healer from Bobcat's taking another for his trouble. The res also coming out. Enjoyable hasn't really been touched this whole entire fight as he does take one kill for himself. Now going to spread out the back line of St. Clair as the rest of St. Clair want to get, or uh, the rest of Bobcats want to get onto this site and finally cap it for themselves as Seymour now being taken very low. St. Clair finally being... Uh, I guess exposed for uh, the multiple, multiple wins that they have had weeks and weeks in a row. Bobcats finally exploiting all of the different strats that St. Clair has been playing, and they have already taken this first point. It actually took St. Clair a little bit of time to take the first point here uh, on this map, so it could be, could be uh, just ride or die. For them as now they switch on over to attack but not yet i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself as bobcats are still pushing this payload now what we do see here is pretty crucial as st Clair managed to die quickly and right. regroup fast enough so they could fight in this choke which yeah. for the defense is like in the dorado choke it is insanely powerful for the defense well we see the male just kind of says you want to fight in the choke fine yeah. you rush into us you'll just walk <laughs> into the freeze <laughs> exactly if all freezed up it's gonna be St. Clair now. I almost kind of feel like it, this is a this is a weird feeling. I've always felt this, where nothing is happening, but the overtime timer at the top is going crazy. Where it's like it could, it could end any moment, but no, they, they're just chilling on the payload. They're pushing the payload to its maximum potential. <laughs> just chilling, chilling out for the time being. But St. Clair, they need to get any picks possible here, just by dwindling any shields that are in their way but they're not able to do so just yet. Blizzard does come out though from St. Clair Crypto going down very early on is not good whatsoever. However, Imp is gonna be turning into a DPS at this point. Now taking out Arisa as well. Yusin taking care of whatever he needs to take care of over on his front as well. But Bobcats are looking like they're in a situation just to take at least this first point, which could be super, super crucial. Because right now, I can't really even imagine being St. Clair. At least my mental would be absolutely boomed. However, when you're playing in a competitive setting like this, I feel like they just are constantly saying, you know what, reset, and we'll try and get them on the next push. For sure. And we do see quite possibly a crucial mistake from St. Clair as it pops his sound barrier at the end of that fight where they could need it to stop the Feral. That's no longer to be coming because the Vara died. Yep. Uh, <laughs> oh, a very good whole, or whole rock combination though from St. Clair's tanks. Yeah. Instantly doing the Pharah. We see the pole coming out as St. Clair's positioning was a little too close to the edge. However, we do see some picks going in the way of St. Clair. Yeah. With their spawn being closer here and them being on the faster characters with Felicio, they could come back into this fight with Bobcats having a man down. Yep. I feel like Bobcats, their mentals right now are stay on the point whenever possible. They have the Farah 
on this right side balcony with the payload now being forced on up as well. You do have Enjoyable taking down to very low HP, but still has his ultimate available for himself. Seymour taking one for his troubles, but it's a lot of damage that came out. Enjoyable finally being shut down with Jub Jub putting on his carry pants. A 4k for himself as finally round number three ends and Bobcats are finally... They put they, Saint Clair finally put a stop to Bob Caps Caps' reign of reign of terror. I can't get my words out. Initiating match. Yeah, for sure. Like Bobcats having an amazing push there, you know, with just one minute on the clock and most of that minute being spent trying to cap the first point, you know, pushing all the way through the streets phase and then finally like that factory area stopping there is really impressive and going to be difficult for Saint Clair to try to match that. Right, and St. Clair, they've got to pull out every little strat that they have now. You see Crypto and Jub Jub still deciding on which heroes they want to play here on attack. Bobcats so far are pulling out literally the exact same comp that St. Clair pulled out in multiple rounds in a row. Imp, Yustin going back over to their healers. Yustin actually switching on over to the Baptiste. He played it a little bit. Okay, no, he switched on back to Moira. He's just baiting me a little bit. But they're just getting ready for their attack setup. Now we do see the Junkrat coming back out for the Bobcats. Probably expecting the Bastion Sim, which is... Oh, Five, as I say that, four, they swap off the Sim. Three. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the Reaper. <laughs> now the Reaper. Okay, back to the standard comp. <laughs> just rush into them and get a pick. <laughs> Exactly. And we'll see if they can do that here starting off already 50 seconds have hit the clock and they are speeding over towards the point. Play some epic uh, montage music now as St. Clair. They're not really taking out their opponents just yet. Jub Jub is on the uh, side here. Does have to go into his uh, immortality type of zone. But as well, Junkrat getting one pick already onto a healer is super, super crucial. Jub Jub now trying to go for the flank on his opponents is also really good. But what is he able to get? Really nothing just yet as he is taken down to 5 HP. Picks up a heal for himself and gets right on back into the back line. Pause. Goes through. They had a DC. Oh. Oh, okay. So apparently St. Clair had a DC somewhere on that point. They have 15 seconds remaining to get onto the point. <laughs> Bobcats are saying, yo, come on. <laughs> 19 seconds is all that remaining. And I feel like the one mentality of Bobcats here is just, yo, does it really matter? Does it really matter? And it does. It does in the long haul. Um, since St. Clair do have 19 seconds, what are they able to do with 19 seconds? I feel like in my brain, nothing. However, uh, is that opinion different? I know it, it's going to be tough. That yeah. okay, first cool. 40 seconds, <laughs> they didn't get much done. They didn't build up many, like they didn't build up their ultimate charge very much. They just got kind of shattered. I'm still kind of disappointed not to see Seymour try to pull out the D.Va, especially, you know, yeah. not only is she good against Junkrat, but she's also good against Pharah, which um, for both the attacking runs of Bobcats running that Pharah, the D.Va could have been pretty good for stopping the CC and the, uh, the, you know, the explosion damage from coming out. Here we go. Last 10 seconds here of the round itself. Prince Wada already going down. Not too happy with his display, at least here on this last point. Overtime has gone down. Jub Jub literally trying to scrounge whatever he can find, but Yustin is pulling through with his damage, but does get frozen up in the process. Jub Jub finally getting himself onto the point itself. Seymour now taking one for his troubles as well, as low health parts are now going down on the side of Bobcats. The potential is still there. I doubted them. There was that small potential that you said that they had, and they're able to take the point as Jub Jub does get into the enemy lines. And it feels like it is just off of the back of pure heart from St. Clair that is going to be able to push this payload. Yeah, you know, Justin making great use of the one and ulti ultimate St. Clair had, finding a really good yeah. pick to start things off, drawing the attention of everyone on Bobcaps to look behind them, letting St. Clair push in, you know, kind of like put one person on the point, activate overtime, step off, go back on, step off, go back on until they were a full man. Oh, yeah. 
the rib tire. Man, you hate to see it. <laughs> you yeah. hate to see it. it. Feels bad, man. All of the emotes that you want to use. GG's come out in the chat. Justin Alt at fouring. He doesn't want any part of that. The St. Clair lose game number three. And it is Bobcats that came out two to one here, at least in this series. Uh, you know, Bobcats making some pretty good swaps. You know, you know, St. Clair wanted to play up close and personal. And Bobcats, you know, playing further back, spamming them from a distance, you know, not letting them play the game that they want to play. Mm. And St. Clair just not really, and especially in those last two maps, not adapting to what Bobcats were doing. It's definitely unfortunate. It's definitely, definitely unfortunate. Um, St. Clair are lined up to play two games here tonight, two best of threes, and we already saw the first one. So as I like to say with my buddies when we get dumpstered, I don't want to say that St. Clair got, got dumpstered here, but uh, when I get dumpstered in my games, I say, you know what, boys, that's just the warm up, and that's all you really have to say here at the end of the day. But we are going to head just to a very small break as we get this next match set up for all of you beautiful people at home. But from over here at the casting desk, we will be back in just a little bit.
And we are back once again, ladies and gentlemen, with some more Overwatch for your beautiful eyes to watch. Once again, on the casting desk, myself, the safe one. Joining me is Bailable. Bailable, how are you feeling after that first set? You know, I'm pumped to see what St. Clair pulls out this time around. You know, we are going to be seeing, uh, obviously, them play against a completely different team, which yep. will have completely different strats. You know, hopefully, we'll see St. Clair adapt in different ways. Mm -hmm. Um and maybe pull out a few more cheeky strats as we saw a couple times on Dorado. Yep. As we get on into the enemy enemy uh spawn area, we get to see their strats and just look on over at their scoreboard and, and see all their different strats. Now nah, we're I'm kidding, but um we get to see their comps at least so far. Uh, but it's just to quickly introduce these teams over on Saint or over on the uh I guess there's no real attackers or defenders, but over on the uh, the left side, we have St. Clair College, Crypto, Imp, Jub Jub, Yustin, Seymour, Prince Wada, and over on the other side, Virginia Wesleyan University, Ten Buck, La Lavern, uh, Mad. We also have the Cole, Ace Man, and Kate and Cats. But starting off on this point, we're gonna be looking at this uh, cap to the point type of uh, type of map. Looking at these two team comps, do you, you, do you see anything kind of unusual or just very basic stuff? Um, I'm interested to see the Tracer choice over the usual Reaper you'd see in mm -hmm. uh, St. Clair's comp. You know, uh, maybe it's just like personal preference and obviously she's able to move around a lot quicker and kind of yeah. like flanking routes on this map being a little longer. Maybe that's why they prefer the Tracer over the Reaper just to quickly get in. Now we see mm -hmm. the ultimate also builds up really quickly. You get an easy pick onto the Faro, which Saint yeah. did struggle a little bit against in their last match. Yeah. And uh, as far as uh, Wesleyan University, this map is pretty good for Farah. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of corners and stuff she can play around. Um, yeah. Obviously, we've been seeing her get good value as this fight goes through, finding really good picks. And even after um, Jub Jub got her good pulse bomb to finish her off, Cats just was there for the rest. Exactly, and now with the point already at almost 50%, 45 to be exact. Now it's finally going to go over to Virginia Wesleyan, and they have already look, or they're already looking like a very solid team, at least over here on attack. They held their defense very, very well on the map itself, with Jub Jub being the only one really getting up close and personal with the enemy team, or at least what we've seen so far, and outputting a whole lot of damage for himself. However, we have a whole lot of time still left in this match, so St. Clair could very easily take this point back if they really want to. But getting on the point itself now, Virginia, oh, as well, St. Clair, they're trying to uh, they're trying to output as much damage as possible, and it's going to be done so by Prince Wada to start off this point as well. It's going to be a small, small cap that goes down through for St. Clair. They're not able to finally secure, and just as, as I say that, they are able to secure the point itself. But now with the res is coming out from all across this map, it looks like Virginia want to get onto this point as fast as possible. Yeah, well, you see quite the back and forth coming back. St. Clair managed to recap the point, though, which is crucial, because now, even while this fight is going on, they're still building up that percentage. You know, once uh, Virginia managed to retake this, which they're not going to here, but St. Clair's going to be in a very good spot to take this first round. Um, they may have burned a lot of volts, but they are coming up on another blizzard really soon with Crypto, which, you know, against the cop that uh, Wesleyan is running, without the Lucio, there's no one to speed you out of that blizzard. So yeah. if Crypto want, like, wants to find one person, he just throws it on, like, right in the middle, and just someone's going to get caught in it. Exactly. But now St. Clair able to put up the point to almost 100% here as Virginia does get one kill for themselves. It's going to be ace to start this one off as well. But they need to start to slowly wipe their competition. It's going to be the ultimate from Farah that does come out. Doesn't actually get anybody just yet as Prince Wada able to shield the rest of his team. Now St. Clair looks like they do want to just try and close out this point in order to go to another point and go up 1-0 on their opponents. And so far it's looking like they are going to be able to jump jump completely deletes the mercy in the back line and that is going to be it st Clair, they take their first point here on this map for sure we didn't really like see a whole lot come out of virginia in that last bit like we did see uh, them using their barrage but 
And perhaps a little bit of a weird spot where, yes, that uh, 10 buck was able to see both of St. Clair's tanks, but both the shields were in the way. Seymour still had his uh, suck still available, so the second the shields went down, he used that yeah, to protect it. both him and Prince Wada. And we saw, like, Madison, like, not really get much value out of their picks so far. So I think the DPS need to step up a little bit more for Virginia if mm -hmm. they want to take this next point. You can see the switch is already coming out for themselves as they switch on over to the soldier as well as the reaper here for themselves. So maybe they can output a little bit more damage. I know that reaper, a whole lot of damage if you're up close and personal as well. A soldier being that kind of backline uh, attacker could do a whole lot as well. But now getting into the match itself, we have Imp already taking one. Crypto now with the second one for his squad. Prince Wada with the third. You're almost kind of seeing a pattern that goes through for St. Clair when they go on maps that are very, very common to see. And it's, it's really, really cool to see as well. Just them absolutely wipe their competition off of a loss that could have actually destroyed their morale and they didn't allow it to. Now getting into this into this map, they've already taken the point. And, and we do see like the effects that running the Soldier 76 over a May is having for the side of Virginia. Like, sure, once you cap the point and you're able to fight where you want, that Soldier can get a lot of value from range. You know, the Reaper can't really get up to you. The May can't do anything except for maybe get a few stray icicles onto you. But, you know, St. Clair, like, rushing into them so fast, Ten Buck didn't have an opportunity to set up, and now they're just, you know, getting stomped in. Even with the tack visor still available, I hope to see a swap here as you're not going to get a whole lot done with it with two shields in your way. No, no, you're not. And now, still, St. Clair wiping their competition as they are inside of the enemy base <laughs> with the rest of Virginia Wesleyan just trying to rush into their opponents with not the absolute best strat for themselves. But Jub Jub does take in, is taken down to very low HP, says see ya and then gets on out of his troubles for himself. Definitely really good coordination for him now. As we head into the 50 percentile mark of this match, St. Clair is still absolutely wiping the floor with their opponents and now going to use the Blizzard is going to be Crypto as uh, the Flux also comes out from Seymour. Blizzard taking down one. Seymour also taking down the second one here of this fight. And the rest of Virginia is on the point itself. However, the rest of St. Clair are all there. Just disrupt whatever their opponents have going for themselves. Almost taking the point is actually going to be Virginia Wesleyan, but they don't really close anything out just yet. As St. Clair do take another fight for themselves. And we saw very good ultimate usage from St. Clair College there. Once, you know, they found out where Virginia Wesleyan was going, you know, they just popped the blizzard. Once Crypto was, you know, getting low, couldn't do any more freezing himself. They all froze up. Seymour took the opportunity, used his flux to lift everyone up in the air. When you're frozen, there's nowhere yep. you can, nothing you can really do about it. And then afterwards, uh, Virginia Wesleyan trying to clutch out the fight with a Gravitic flux of their own. Imp had the beat ready to keep everyone up and topped up. Yep, Jub Jub with one right into the back. Jub Jub now with two blinking all over across this point, and he also gets the Diva for his troubles as well. Now trying to get the opponents off of the field. It, it feels like whenever St. Clair face a team, they almost kind of uh, <laughs> they copy strats. Right? Virginia ended up switching on over to the the tracer, and I feel like that was just to get onto the point itself. But uh, Jub Jub still the better tracer at the end of the day. For sure, you know, with like these last two games, you know, St. Clair, you know, even like in the last two maps, like it looked like they were like struggling a little bit, whatever it was on Busan, they look very well practiced, very well coordinated and their execution is near flawless. Yeah, um, it feels like St. Clair just all warmed up now, you know, that kind of was their warm up, which was the first game. Uh, or the first set where they ended up taking it the full distance, and it was uh, unfortunate to see St. Clair lose. However, they took that map decisively. They did not crack whatsoever. Jub Jub in the back line was super oppressive, and nobody could have dealt with the Tracer. So expect to see a whole lot of stuff come out of Jub Jub as these games go on. And now we are going back on to Dorado. I wonder if we're going to see as aggressive of a hold Mm -hmm. uh, for St. Clair as they did in that last match as you never know what Virginia's been up to maybe you know they took a peek at the stream before this match came up see what was St. Clair was up to with the shenanigans yeah. but uh, obviously you know we do see the May Reaper Arissa Sigma and Lucio Moira come out for St. Clair yep. very standard meta comp potential for them to do their shenanigans 
don't know if they'll do it twice, but we'll have to see. And we do see the Torbjorn coming out from Virginia, as well as the Pharah, so a lot of range poke damage. Yeah. The, the Both these characters beat out Reaper May in the, in the, in the range battle, and potentially in those choke <laughs> situations. Yeti having a little bit of fun with the pinatas. Good old classic stuff. But as we head on into this match, if you guys remember St. Clair, we're very close on to winning this site. However, now they want to try and trap their opponents inside of the spawn in good old St. Clair fashion. Who dies first? It's going to be Torbjorn at the start of this one. However, a one for one does go down. Now here on this site, as Virginia does want to try and get onto this payload and push it as best as possible. But it's going to be St. Clair that stops them initially. Very good icicle there from yeah. Crypto taking out uh, Ten Buck. You know, one of the biggest problems St. Clair is going to have here. And though Virginia did have the right idea coming out of spawn, having a lot of people funnel through that top bit so that St. Clair couldn't just trap one person. In the end, they're very well, it seems they're very well practiced on this type of strategy and they're ready for pretty much anything. Yep, yep, yep. It's just gonna be good old St. Clair coming through here with the basic good old strat. However, Virginia have literally no idea how to counter this. It looks like they are just not too ready for uh, what St. Clair have, have provided here. Uh, transferring over between this entrance and the other entrance. Crypto just solo holding this for himself. Now the wall has not actually gone out just yet. Finally going to go out and the communi communication does go down saying, hey, I got two over here on this front. Prince Wise saying, hey, I have one over on my area. <laughs> Please, someone help. All of this go down, and it's going to be on the back of Prince Wada's uh, pull over towards the rest of the team. Seymour with one more uh, little boop, little ball over to the hands of Farah. This is not looking good whatsoever. I have, I don't think I've ever seen this out of any team. Oh, it is absolutely ridiculous when it works. We're seeing, granted, some good swaps come out here from Virginia. Having the monkey, it's not as easy to, uh, you know wall him off as he can just jump over the wall if Grant uh, is true. able to. We did see St. Clair taking some really good positioning as, you know, we had Jub Jub up top, you know, making sure that Farah can't come up the side. And we had uh, Crypto watching one door while the tanks watch the other. And it was just instantly the second someone walks out, someone's dying almost instantly. Yep. I have no words for what I am seeing here. It's gonna be, it's a minute 30. A minute 30 until St. Clair uh, feel like they are, are the, kind of the victors here, but you can't really count out uh, Virginia Wesleyan just yet. But at this point, I have no idea what Virginia can do here versus St. Clair's defense, because so far they have not found the counters just yet. Right now, their idea is fair, and there we go. Finally, two kills going to the way of Virginia. However, Crypto does take one for himself as well. Prince Wada trying to hold down the fort over on the front side of the door here, but Prince Wada finally now going down. Virginia only has a one minute to push this payload, and I honestly cannot believe it. Oh yeah, this is actually absolutely insane coming up from St. Clair. It's disgusting. Uh, the cheese strat working out very well for them, and now they have time to regroup, potentially before that cart gets into that crucial choke. And I'm not really too keen on Virginia swaps, though like the monkey and the diva aren't very well equipped to deal with uh, May Reaper as the Reaper will just shred the monkey, and the diva, the defense matrix is good, but it unfortunately doesn't eat May's freezing capabilities, so she can just freeze the D.Va and now she's not really doing anything. Exactly. We gotta wait to see if uh, the freeze can actually be as effective as you say. Jub Jub still getting into the back line no matter what hero he's playing. Prince Wada with the hold now at the front. It's gonna be off of the back of the May wall. Jub Jub now getting into the back line. Has his ultimate available if he wants to use it. However, doesn't really need to just yet. This is unfortunate but we do switch the perspective right on over to the point itself. Now, a whole lot of damage being done. Jub Jub waited for the Riptire to be finished and then ended up killing the uh, the Junkrat. But still, now overtime coming through. Jub Jub getting into the back line, finally using his Death Blossom, and it does a whole lot of damage to two. Also taking out the Diva. It's going to be Seymour. Over time, the bar goes down, and St. Clair of Holt held inside of the choke. 
that is just super oppressive the whole act zero very impressive indeed you know we see saint Clair, you know just knowing like what to do when they do want to do it and just no matter what Vir West Vir or virginia wesleyan wanted to try there it just didn't quite work out for them you know they did manage to break through eventually off of having their being able to divide saint Clair's attention off of one focal point you know spreading them out having um 10 bucks far on one angle having their winston on another angle their diva shooting them down from up top they, they didn't really know where to focus or what to look at but in the end saint Clair having the ult advantage due to virginia wesleyan having so many swaps they had the reaper and gravitic flux ults online to be able to combo those together and just massive amounts of damage to finish that out the rest of virginia a little bit of banter in the chat but now getting on to this point i feel like they are as surprised as we are <laughs> but st Clair now has to get on to this um i think i guess they have to push the payload all the way to this bridge and they're able to do so now they're just talking about exams in the chat in good old st Clair fashion trying to be friendly with the enemy team as best as possible look at the setup they're doing literally the exact same thing but you have crypto saying no we have seen that strat multiple times before let's just block it off with a wall however seymour does get taken down though jub jub in the back line no one seems to be focusing on to him as now he's doing a decent amount of damage but does get back on into his own base this is not only the this is not the only time that we've actually seen a team face saint Clair and pull out their own strats versus them and this is once again what is happening virginia saying you know what why not let's just uh let's just pull out something not from our play but from the opponents uh, and you see St. Clair does have the right idea with the Roadhog, able to bust through those walls really easily. Crypto's laying out the wall to cut off uh, the, May the West Virginia Wesleyan's maze sightline, so she can't even wall off St. Clair as they walk through. And Jub Jub pulling out his, his Genji, you know. He's got a really good Genji. He's built up his ultimate in under a minute, which is yeah. extremely impressive for a Genji in a meta where there's two shields in your way, you know, May blocks, Moira fades. Not really easy to get Genji to do his job in a meta like this. But as we see, Jub Jub pulling out an absolutely clutch blade, picking off multiple members of Weston and yep. just finishing out that fight. That's it. Moin now to get into the back line is going to be Jub Jub as St. Clair want to finish off this point in style. Virginia had no strats of their own in order to hold this close to the point. So that's just going to be St. Clair. Wanting to close out the match, however, Jub Jub does end up going down as well. Virginia Wesleyan does take a couple of kills for their troubles as well. Now that the point is on very, or at least very close to the objective itself. Now we want to just hold on to whatever grasp of hope that they have left for themselves here on the map of Dorado. Blizzard does go out here onto the point itself. Now going to be freezing up the whole entire enemy backline does pick off at least one but not, none actually going to be falling here at the end of the day. Charging up the punch is going to be Jub Jub as now he gets on the point. Justin finally with the Coalescence saying, let's just finish off this game, guys. We are trolling way too much. However, Death Blossom in the back line takes out three. Seymour finally taking out the, uh, the Reaper. Madison, you're on the point. But it's just two ice walls is the only thing that is stopping St. Clair from finally pushing out this point. And that, I believe is going to be it. St. Clair in a very decisive fashion finish off their second series in 20 minutes. Quite the difference in, uh, you know, games, games, games between the two. Yeah. You know, we had a, a match that went the distance and we just saw quite a St. Clair rolling in quite dominant fashion, being able to pull out, you know, flexing over, flexing their muscles on like the niche picks like genji yeah um, and the tracer in the first map you know not always something you see um you know but uh we saw even on the map of dorado we saw saint Clair knew exactly what to do against their own strats you know they f absolutely decimated with that um spawn campy strat with the yeah. may where they just wall people off as they walk through you know they had the reaper up above to deal with anyone trying to come from the top 
And then when we came to their attacking round, we saw that uh, Jub Jub knew exactly where to put his walls. He walls up so that when they block off sight lines, they can't get a wall of their own out. They can just walk right. out for free and then just in the in St. Clair fashion, just run into them and just roll <laughs> over them. I like how you're very uh, you're starting to learn how St. Clair uh, plays. Good old St. Clair fashion is what we like to say here on the cast. And this is exactly what we ended up seeing. But uh, that is going to be it. Over here from uh, the St. Clair perspective, we saw two amazing games of Overwatch, one that was very, very close, and one that was a complete stomp where St. Clair channeled all of their anger from game number one and just unleashed it onto Virginia West, uh, Wesleyan. So definitely good stuff coming out of them. If you guys want some more St. Clair action, then tomorrow night starting at 8, we do have the Rocket League team coming on to the stream as well as Friday night. At or a Friday afternoon, actually at one o'clock, we got a uh, Fortnite over here on the St. Clair stream. So if that if that kind of piqued your interest, then definitely tune in to this same exact stream. But for myself, the saved one as well as available, that's going to be it for your Overwatch cast for tonight. And we are going to sign off saying good night. I hope you guys have a, an amazing rest of your night.